Martins. Hello, this is Dan Damon with World Update from the BBC in London. We're going to speak to a former US Federal Appeals Court judge about the Ninth Circuit Appeals Court's refusal to reinstate President Trump's ban on all refugees, plus travellers from seven mainly Muslim countries entering the US. And staying with security in the US, we'll debate an article that asserts the real threat to US security emanates not from the south, but from the northern border with Canada. We simply do not have an effective control over our northern border. And so what I'm advocating is for the Trump administration to begin looking at, at things such as increasing the border patrol size and maybe looking at some of the visa waivers that we, we grant. Also our Friday feature, Down the Rabbit Hole. <laughs> Name Canada from the South Park movie. A sentiment at the heart of a debate, really, coming up on World Update in about 20 minutes. We'll talk about whether Canada's border policies are a threat to the United States and whether the U.S. authorities should be taking security on its northern border much more seriously, let alone talk about building walls on the south. Headlines. The White House says President Trump has told his Chinese counterpart, Xi Jinping, he will honor the One China policy. Detail. Donald Trump has made very clear his strict opposition to illegal immigration from Mexico. It's one of the hallmarks of his campaign. He's promised to build a wall. You know all about that. His supporters are arguing there's another border which needs to be looked at, the one with Canada. The conservative writer, Brandon Weichart, has written an article for the Trump-supporting website, American Greatness, arguing for better vetting and a tougher visa arrangement with Canada. We brought him together with David Perry, a fellow with the Canadian Global Affairs Institute in Ottawa. Brandon first, what's he worried about? The big issue here is it is, first of all, the largest undefended land border in the world. And right now, even if everything was going well, we only have about 300 agents assigned permanently to defending the border, whereas opposed to the southwestern border, we have uh, anywhere on average of 2,000, and we still have problems there. The issue at hand is with this massive land border and very little protection, we cannot control who is coming in and coming out of Canada. And when you add in the mix of refugees and, and immigrants fleeing from the war-torn Middle East, the risk of having people crossing either illegally or simply using a waiverless visa as Canadians. They get that right. It's agreement with our government. The issue is they could come in here and incite terrorist violence or incite extremist rhetoric, and um, we simply do not have an effective control over our northern border. And so what I'm advocating is for the Trump administration to begin looking at things such as increasing the border patrol size of the force patrolling the north of the border and maybe looking at some of the visa waivers that we grant. Another problem is we don't share the no-fly lists between America and Canada are quite different and we don't communicate with each other on that because the Canadian government does not want, they, they don't want to violate what they perceive as the constitution, Canadian constitutional rights. And so we don't really share much in that regard. But it's a question of control, isn't it, David yes. Perry? And Sorry. let me ask you how much control you think Canada really has. So there, there are plenty of fictional accounts of the Canadian border being easy to cross. Is it? I, so I would, I would say that those accounts are absolutely fictional. Um, okay. If you look at the actual number of problems that we've had, uh, it's quite extraordinarily low, uh, given that it's one of the, the borders in the world that are, are crossed uh, most frequently and most actively, both for the uh, economic uh, livelihoods of, of both of our countries. If you look in, in greater perspective, Canada is actually one of the hardest places in the world to travel to um, through immigration means, unless you're coming from the United States. Um, that's true not just because of geography and distance, but it's also true uh, based on the very low numbers of people we actually admit. Canada's immigration levels have varied over the last decade, somewhere between 250 to currently about 300,000, significantly less than the United States. Even if you look at uh, refugee movements specifically, we're talking about numbers that are far smaller than they are for a lot of other countries, certainly significantly smaller than they are for the United States. 
Uh, in the past, we've averaged somewhere about 10,000 uh, a year. Under the current government, uh, which has made it a, a key policy priority that it wants to really try and present itself as being open to the inflow of uh, refugees coming from war-torn populations, those numbers are going to go up uh, and percentage terms are going to increase significantly, but really only talking about 25 to 30,000 roughly annually uh, coming from those specific regions. Those numbers are less than they are if you look at comparable American statistics, um, even with if you look at uh, region by region comparison. And in terms of people coming in without screening, that's just simply not true. Um, Canada security agencies, um, all of our, our agencies at the federal level, cooperate extremely closely with uh, American colleagues. The people that are being brought in are all being screened. Uh, Brandon, g give us some instances. I, I, I only, only mention fiction because I've read stories which involve that idea that it's easy to cross the Canadian yeah. border. But are there instances that you can cite where people with ill intent have crossed the border into the United States from Canada? I worked previously on Capitol Hill, and when we, I think it was a year and a half ago, they, the Senate Homeland Security and Government Accounting uh, com Subcommittee had the uh, border enforcement agencies testify, and they indicated in sworn testimony, the Obama administration's people, that they cannot secure the northern border and that there have been instances, in fact, and this is in sworn testimony, that they can confirm that there have been instances of radicalized elements coming across, for instance, into Minnesota, into uh, North Dakota, coming in from Ontario, coming in from Montreal, coming in from Quebec. And so that sworn testimony of the previous administration, which was quite friendly toward you know, all forms of, of open open borders. So there have been instances, yes, and as I noted in the article, one of the most famous ones uh, was Ahmed Rassam, who in fact was an Algerian uh, asylum seeker in Canada, and he used a visa to come across into the United States where he planned to conduct the famous part of the Millennium Bomb Plot in the year 1999. You know, it's I, I don't mean to pick on the Canadians. I, I like Canada. It's just, unfortunately, in this one issue area, in terms of their refugee and immigration policy vis-a-vis -vis the U.S., we, we've got to get stronger. We've got the the U.S. has got to prevent terror attacks here. David Perry, what's your response to that? Well, I, I think there's a number of things, in, and I, I just don't see what the empirical record to suggest that there's a problem that needs to be solved is. Uh, if you go back to the Ahmed Rassam case, that was an issue where one individual almost 20 years ago uh, did cross the border. Across the, the grand sweep of counterterrorism activity, I think most countries would consider a single instance of someone in that position actually getting through the screening, screening and the security measures to be a tremendous success, particularly when you, when you consider the, the huge volume, millions of people crossing that border for economic and totally legitimate reasons all of the time. So there's some discussion about the differences in the no-fly list, and we do maintain different ones uh, for national travel. That doesn't mean that if someone leaves Canadian airspace going to the United States that we will apply our own rules and ignore the American ones. That's not at all what happens. You can't get into the United States if you're on one of those restrictive American lists. So I think on a, on a lot of these different measures, if you actually look at the data, uh, given the enormous flow of people as well as goods and economic activity across that border, it's remarkably safe. David Perry from the Canadian Global Affairs Institute, and before him you heard Brandon Weichert, who has said in the website American Greatness that Canada might be a security problem. Well, within the past hour, a court in Hamburg's judged that the German comedian Thank <laughs> you.